Thanks for joining this quick how-to screencast brought to you by Salesforce. There are several tools to choose from for importing data into Salesforce. Three are available within the user interface. Both administrators and end users can use the data import wizard. Dataloader.io is also available to admins. This free version allows you to import or export up to 10,000 records per month. A more robust option is the Data Loader. This is available to users with admin rights and downloadable from the setup pages. Here's a quick chart comparing the tools. The Data Import Wizard can import anywhere from 500 to 50,000 records at a time, depending on the type of records being imported. This free version of dataloader.io can import or export up to 10,000 records each month. If you've got more than 50,000 records, use Data Loader. Depending on what field you choose for matching, the Data Import Wizard can catch duplicates. Dataloader.io and the Data Loader match only on record ID and will not catch duplicates of names or emails. With the wizard, you have the option to turn off workflow. With dataloader.io and data loader, you'll need to remember to deactivate workflow rules from setup before you begin your import. If you need to export data, like record IDs, you can use either dataloader.io or the data loader. And if you need to import objects not supported by the data import wizard, such as opportunities or cases, you can use either dataloader.io or the data loader. It's important to note that when using the wizard or dataloader.io, the record owner is not a required field. If that information is not in your import file, the person doing the import becomes the owner of all the imported records. Depending on your org-wide defaults, role hierarchy, and sharing rules, it might be critical for you to specify the owners for the imported records. In Data Loader, the owner ID is a required field, so you have to indicate the owner by using the owner's record ID. Both the Data Wizard and dataloader.io have a wizard interface to walk you through their use. So in our demo, we'll walk you through Data Loader. We're going to assume you've already installed Data Loader, if you still need to do so, we've put links to the help documentation and video in the short description of this video for you. Once we've installed it on our computer, we can access it through the Start menu or from a desktop shortcut. Launching it, we can choose from any of the following. We can insert new records. This is the command we'll use for importing. Each record that is imported will be assigned a unique Salesforce ID that will be visible in the success file. We can update existing records. Updates are done by first matching the ID in the file with the ID in Salesforce, and then updating that record with the new information in the file. The upsert command allows us to insert new records and update existing records in the same operation. We can delete records and we can export them. Export All includes data which you have in your recycle bin and any soft deleted records. Under Settings, Settings, you can change the default operation settings of the data loader. We will keep the defaults as is, but for more information on this, search for Configure Data Loader in our developer documentation. We've put a link in the short description of this video for you. Let's start with Insert we'll be prompted to log in using our Salesforce username and password. Here, we choose which object to import. You can only import one type of object at a time. If you don't see the object you're looking for, remember to click Show All Salesforce Objects. We'll choose Account, and then we'll locate our import file. We'll start with an import file that has only five records. This way, if we have any errors, we can fix them before we try to import a large number of records. After Data Loader initializes the file, it will give you a count of how many records will be imported. If this number does not match the number of records in your file, you should close out of Data Loader and check your import file. 
you may need to delete rows below your data, even if they look empty. Now we'll map the field names in Salesforce with the columns in our import file. This auto match button will try to match them for you. For anything that isn't matched, we can drag and drop the correct fields from the top to the bottom. In this step, we'll choose where to save our success and error files. It's a best practice to save files to a place you'll remember, since Data Loader will always name them success and error, and if you're doing more than one import, it can get confusing. You'll also want to keep those success files because that's where you'll find the record ID for any new records you've imported. The final screens list how many records were imported, giving me a total tally of successes and failures. Checking the success file, we see that the Salesforce record ID has been added to the data. Let's keep this file for future reference. We may need to match this record ID with contacts or opportunities we want to import. If we have errors, we can open this file to see what caused the problem. Then we can fix it and try to re-import. For more information on success and error files, see this video. And of course, there's a link in the short description for you. There are a few things to remember about the data loader. The data loader recognizes only one field for the street address. So if your import data has address 1 and address 2 fields, these must be combined before you begin your import. Data loader matches on record IDs only. So if you are upserting, that is to say, if you have new records and updates to existing records, you must have the record ID for the existing records, so Salesforce can match the updated information to the right record. Workflow will fire on any records that meet the rule criteria. For example, if you have a workflow that sends an email to finance every time a new account is created and are importing 50 new accounts, then finance will get 50 emails. Be sure to turn off workflow rules if you don't want them to execute. To learn more about data import, check out the whole video series at sforce.co forward slash data import. Check out help.salesforce.com or search the developer documentation at developer.salesforce.com.